Hey, good morning, Canvas Church. We're so excited that you decided to join us this morning. Wherever you might be joining us from, the couch, the cabin, the boat, wherever you are, we're so glad that you're part of our Memorial Day online only service today. We have a fantastic day planned for you. And we just wanna say thank you to anyone who has served or is serving. We remember what you've done and we appreciate everything and your sacrifices. Enjoy today's service, guys. Open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice. A sacrifice I lay me down I'm not my own I belong to you alone Lay me down Lay me down Oh Hands on my heart This much is true There's no life apart from you
Hey Canvas, Pastor Jed here. I wanna just give you an opportunity to remind you that we believe that life is better when it's connected, so go ahead and go online or fill out our Connect card online on our events page. Please get connected with us here at Canvas Church. We'd love to hear. You might even want to let us know where you're listening in from today or wherever you got to see this message. Definitely get connected. Also, we make it super simple for you to give, to give online, to give in person. Obviously, we're online today, but we, we could not do this this type of production without your generous tithes and offerings. So just go ahead and click the link. Follow that. It, super simple. We appreciate all of your giving. You're not going to want to miss today's message. We have an incredible word from Pastor Jeff and Allie. So if you've been a part of their story for the last couple years, you know that they've both gone through incredible life change that has kind of shaped them and molded them and got them to where we are today. But today you get to hear from them directly their story. So you don't want to miss it. Tune in. Enjoy today's message. I'm Allie. I'm Jeff, and uh, we are the Wentz, and we lead a tribe of nine, right? So most that includes us. Most days we're in charge, <laughs> uh, but then we have seven children. <laughs> yeah, 14 months ago it was a family of of like a dad and five kids and a mom and two kids mm -hmm. that became uh, a blended family of nine, which is yeah. kind of crazy. Yep. Kind of amazing. We met on Christian Mingle, and uh, he sent me a winky face. Yeah, so you can either like <laughs> wink or like give a heart, and I didn't want to seem too like like whoa, like, like desperate that'd or be way too like, much. Wow, like so intense, and so sent a smiley face, and then Allie responded with a question. I asked something really dumb, like, where did you go to ministry school? Between the time that I read the question and had a chance to respond, I just realized I'm so done with online dating. Mm -hmm. And so I just literally, I, I canceled my account and I was like, I'm so done. So I never actually responded. Never responded. I got <laughs> together with a friend and she asked me how dating was going. Mm -hmm. I said, not great. And the only guy I was excited about never responded to me. And I described him like this. I said he was a pastor and he was a widower and he was really cute. And she just looks at me and she goes, Jeff? And I was like, Crazy. yeah, that was his name. Like, how did you know that? And she's like, I grew up with him. He's amazing. It was just immediate, the connection. Then we went out mm -hmm. on our second date. It was a profound question that Allie asked me. It was a soul searching question. And I was like, I need this woman in my life. And so that was date number two that I knew. Something that was so important was that um, whoever was going to be my next husband would really love my two boys as his and not just be willing to parent another two kids, but mm -hmm. really like desire to have them. Are you really up for the challenge, like taking two more, not just like, sure, I'll take them, but like, is that in your heart? Do you have that desire? I was texting something about my heart for the boys and how I was just feeling that like God was calling me not to be like their stepdad, but to father them. And that's, that's when I knew. I met Tyler when I was just um, right out of high school. Uh, we both came from a smaller town, went to high school in Hudson, Wisconsin. We went to Paris and he proposed at the Palace of Versailles. So it was like this amazing nice. thing. Nice job. <laughs> I heard that story. I was like, oh, <laughs> how do you job. top that, right? Good like, job, I don't man. know. Nicely um, done. <laughs> <laughs> really, honestly, life was just, it kind of felt like a fairy tale, like exactly the way that I thought life would be. We, we had the perfect little family. We had been um, up at our family cabin. This was my grandpa's land. I would um, spend weekends there with my family and my grandpa. It was a really special place, and actually, it was one of Tyler's favorite places on earth. And we were on a side-by-side, -side, uh, just driving around the yard, picking up sticks. We had Amos in between us, and all of a sudden, Ty just kind of slumped over. At first, I thought he was just kind of joking around, um, I didn't know what was happening, and then I realized something was wrong. And so 
I yelled for my parents and my mom came first and, and started CPR and then my dad um, came and took over. We had taken a, a ride to our favorite spot. that it had been the best weekend and that it was his favorite place. He was just, he was so happy, we were so happy. And so this happened, he slumps over and he never took another breath. He was, he was gone. The next, few months was me really just figuring out like identity and um, what was next for me. So much of, of my life was built around Ty and I's dreams. So now it was like, what do I do? What does God have for me? I always knew that I wanted to get married again. I loved being married. I wanted to be whole on my own and find my identity in, in God, but I also knew I was meant to be a part of a whole. So like Allie, I was thinking about what my next wife would be like and you know, the, the mother to my seven children, because I wasn't just looking for a wife, I was looking for who could be, you know, a maternal covering for them and really truly be their mother. And um, I just remembered like, okay, so I'm a single father of five. Who's gonna look at me and be like, I really, Jeff's awesome, but like the five kids, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I was just really praying about that and trusting God, like, okay, God, only you can orchestrate this because Five kids is a lot of kids when they're your children biologically, but the idea of adopting five kids, it, it's just a whole different level. So Tiffany and I uh, were married, I believe it was in 04, and uh, we had five children together, just an incredible life. We were part of ministry together. I met her as a single youth pastor. She was a youth leader at the church I'd went to and we met and were married. Then we felt like God had, had led us to leave youth ministry to uh, start a brand new church in Northfield, Minnesota called Canvas Church. And um, it was amazing. Around year seven of the church, it was the end of 2016. Uh, Tiffany had noticed some, some, something strange in her body and went in for a mammogram and they found that she had a tumor um, and had breast cancer. We would go to um, chemo sessions where um, I'd be there for a couple hours and then I'd leave that and I'd go, after we were finished, I'd bring Tiffany home and during the time I didn't, it was just like, it's what you do. Like you just, this is what you do. You just go for it. We had five children at the time, Bo being like a one year old, one and a half years old. And just going through this process and um, we got through that year. It was 10 months of, of chemo and multiple surgeries and radiation. And at the end of 2017, Tiffany got a clear bill of health and we're just so excited. We went into 2018 and we broke ground on the building. We built the building. We moved into Canvas Memorial Day of 2018. It was just such a huge celebration. It was so wonderful. In early of 2019, uh, we found out that the cancer was back. Uh, but now it had spread from like stage three to now stage four and it was kind of all over her body. We battled it for uh, seven months and um, July 14th of 2019, Tiffany passed. When, you know, you're married, you're like, I'm gonna be with this person forever. That's the thought process. Everything changes and everything in, it, in an instant life shifts. 
and you're kind of left trying to figure out, okay, what do I do now? I'm trying to grieve for myself. I'm trying to lead my kids through it. And that was one of the hardest things because Jack and Noah, my two oldest sons, were in the room when Tiffany passed and um, my three youngest children weren't. And the hardest thing was and having to wake up the next morning and tell Sally, Finn, and Bo that their mom had passed away and wasn't coming home. Like, they're little hearts. I just... And so, just walking out that process, um, helping them figure out what's next and what's up, because they were old enough to know and old enough to feel mom was gone. I have a friend who talked about that we had a supernatural healing, that God supernaturally healed us and walked through that process. And it was just, yeah, it was incredibly difficult, but God was just so faithful. Ever since I was young, I had the desire to adopt kids. Um, when I met my husband, Tyler, my first husband, that was a thing that we had to talk through and he was, he was totally game for that, which was amazing. We, we went on to adopt our second son, Amos, and in all of that, another thing that God had planted in my heart was having a large and diverse family. And um, I hadn't given up that dream, but it became, in my mind, a harder thing mm -hmm. to achieve. So it's pretty amazing to think like in that whole thing when you're 12 years old, God gives you a vision of a large, diverse, multi-ethnic family. And somehow, some way, God works it out, makes it happen where you are unable to have children, yet you're the mother to seven children of which you've not birthed one. I mean, it's an incredibly beautiful story. God had lined this up um, years before we ever knew each other. July of 2020, we, we commemorated, celebrated the one year anniversary of Tiffany's passing. And I felt at that point like, okay, like, like it's not moving on, it was moving forward. Because oftentimes you're like, oh, just move on from that. It's like, you'll never move on. And I don't think you should move on from one of the most traumatic experiences of your life and, and a deep love of your life. Like, there's memories that Allie has with Tyler that I don't want her to move on from. There's memories I have with Tiffany that it doesn't do us good to move on from. But it, at the same time, the world was moving forward and life was moving forward. And so it felt like it was, it was my time to move forward. Mm -hmm. I will always miss Tiffany uh, and grieve her loss. But there's this part of me that was missing what God called in Genesis, your, your easier or your helpmate suitable for you. I was missing my helpmate. I was missing my, my person to like make, help make my life whole. There were things, dreams that God had placed in my heart, things that I wanted to do that I was, I was really trying to figure out, do I try to make these happen on my own? Yeah. Um, and I really felt a sense of uh, waiting. Um, for my husband, because I knew that what what I was dreaming of wasn't going to be just my thing. Like it was going to be our thing. Our thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to just live life. I don't want to mm. just get through it. Like mm. I want to thrive. I want to use all of the gifts and abilities that God's given me. And so I was just like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> like, come Let's on. Let's do this. Come on. Yeah. So we met in September, and. Uh, we dated for an extremely long time, or what felt like a long time. Uh, we went out to Utah mm -hmm. um, for the launch of a church. Sego Church, Seagull my church. very good friends launched a church out mm -hmm. there that we were a part of. So we got engaged out there. We waited six whole weeks, <laughs> really challenging. <laughs> We mm -hmm. picked 12 12. We're 12, getting 12. married on 12 12. And then every week, and almost daily at one point, mm -hmm. there were just new mandates coming out about 
okay, you can have a gathering, but it's 70 people or whatever. And we were so frustrated. <laughs> I was like, this is so dumb. I said, we should just get married like on a Tuesday at two o'clock. I just threw this out. I was like, great, how about next Tuesday? I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, let's do this. We talked to our family on Sunday night. We're like, yeah. are you guys all in? Mm -hmm. And they're like, We'll be sure. there. <laughs> so it was uh, the 24th of November mm -hmm. on a Tuesday at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. We tied the knot. Is that weird that we high fived? Allie is living in Wisconsin, working in St. Paul. I'm living and working in Northfield, Minnesota. And we're like, okay, what do we do now? Mm -hmm. And decided that it made the most sense for Allie, Lige, and Amos to move into my house in Northfield. We went to actually an IM4 conference together. Oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. And just even being there and being kind of in just this ministry environment, I missed it. And mm. um, my parents had pastored a church for 12 years as I was growing up. I was nervous to tell him that I, I wanted to be in ministry with him. I had that desire in my heart, but I knew that wasn't really quite what we had talked about and what he necessarily desired. And so we were at that time renovating two homes, like the home we lived in because there was a massive water leak. And so there was nine of us that were like eating breakfast in the garage because the <laughs> kitchen was totally tore up. It was ridiculous. In that time frame, we worked together so well mm -hmm. in what could be and should be honestly some of the most stressful times in your life. Mm -hmm. And it really helped me see like how well we truly work together. So ever since we were married, I think we both kind of felt and understood there was something that God had for both of us. You know, sometimes in, in, in the church, we think that the church is the only form of building the kingdom when in reality it's, it's, it can be church or business if it's kingdom minded. And that's one of the core values of our life is kingdom first. Mm -hmm. Whatever God says, we say yes. Okay, it's his kingdom we're longing to build, not our own. Really been living our life from a standpoint of like, okay, God, what do you have for us? Uh, we will do whatever you say, and we will, um, whatever that might be, we serve at your pleasure. Okay, God, what is it that is uniquely went? Uniquely went, like becoming went. Not blended, but like built went. Mm -hmm. And um, so as we've been thinking about this and praying about this, uh, God has opened a very unique opportunity for us, and even sensing a season at Canvas coming to a close. It's been a unique season because it's like when you found something and you birth something, it can be very difficult to say, okay, God, it's yours. Like, I steward this, I don't own this. And if it's time to go, it's time to go. And sensing a shift in season um, where we feel like the unique opportunity that God has, has brought us is to go and build his kingdom, continue to build his kingdom in Salt Lake City, Utah. Now, we mentioned earlier that we helped found a church or helped plant a church in Salt Lake City called Seago Church. Very good friends, Chris and Hannah Bechtel, we were there for the launch. And they told us about this unique opportunity where they're building the church, but there's an opportunity to come alongside them and build businesses that will help support the ministry or the mission of the church. Not just Sego, but other churches in Salt Lake City. All of this has kind of culminated in the past few months. Mm -hmm. Like really the past really quickly. 45 or 60 days, it all kind of came about. And we've been positioning ourselves to hear God. God, what do you have for us? What is your will? And I'll just say, when you ask God that question, just truly be prepared for him to speak, you know? And then and then when he speaks, be prepared to ask him for courage to step out and do what he's asking. We're just so thankful to be able to look back and see God's hand in so many, in, in all things in our life and yeah. the way that he's um, prepared us for what we were gonna walk through, but still what we are going to walk through. He's planted 
so much in our hearts that mm -hmm. we haven't even really talked to each other about until this came up and we're like, oh my gosh, like mm -hmm. I've dreamt about that or oh my gosh, like mm -hmm. that's such a desire of mine. Um, and so just seeing his faithfulness and like really our lives aren't our own. Like it's, we're here to build his kingdom. And so as for us in our house, like that's what we're about. That's what we're gonna do, mm -hmm. no matter the cost. So 11 years ago, um, Tiffany and I, three children pregnant with four, moved to Northfield mm -hmm. to start Canvas. And it was, there's no promise of anything. There's no guarantee of success. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about comfort, it wasn't even about career, it was about calling mm -hmm. and what God's calling us to. And, you know, 11 years later, we can look at what God's done through Canvas, the lives that have been changed, the, the people who will be in heaven because of uh, the effort there, because of the work, because of the investment, because of what we've been able to be a part of doing. Um, and it's just been an incredible gift and it's honestly been one of the greatest honors and pleasures of my life to do what God asked of me earlier and then us now in this season mm -hmm. to see the marriages restored to see literally heaven expanded because of uh because of what god's doing through canvas it's been incredible and i know if you're a part of canvas you might be wondering okay well what then what god is in the the business of win-wins mm -hmm. like if our season is coming to a close at canvas it's not like God has uniquely prepared us for what's next and not thought about Canvas. Mm -hmm. God has uniquely prepared both for what he has next, for the next season of both. Yeah. For the next season for Canvas to have a, a, a pastor to come and be a part um, and for us to go and continue to build and expand his kingdom in Salt Lake City, Utah, where only 3% of people say they're Christians. 97% of individuals do not uh, ascribe to Christianity. It's, it's, a, it's a calling that we're answering, and it's not a, I feel like it's not an ending with canvas, but ascending. Like God is sending us to where we're going next, and it's, it's just very exciting. Yeah. God is doing something mm -hmm. here. He's doing something new. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's been people that said it's like a new church launch. Like mm -hmm. the church is kind of, new again. Mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. is doing a thing at Canvas and it's been an awesome season. It's been really amazing. It's hard to leave it. But Canvas is in the best hands that it can be in. It's in God's hands. It's His church. This is what God's kingdom is about. It's about creating and expanding the kingdom. And, and that's the thing that for us, as much as we'd love to stay and to be comfortable, we just know that God's calling us to something new. Thank you for welcoming me in. And um, man, I've learned a lot since I've been at Canvas. I've met so many amazing people. Just thank you. How do you say goodbye? I don't think it's goodbye, it's thank you thrill and it's see you later because I we might be moving we might be leaving this state we might be going to a different space on this earth but when the kingdom connects us like the connection doesn't end and I'm so grateful for the years that God gave me to lead canvas to steward canvas what God's doing at canvas what his spirit is doing through canvas I'm just so grateful and so humbled and so honored for all the mornings you showed up, for all the small groups you attended, for all the things that you did, for all the, the, the willingness to listen to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to change your life. I'm so grateful. We've seen so many lives change. And I just want to say thank you for your willingness to allow the Holy Spirit to change you. Um, it's been my honor to, to pastor you. It's been my honor to lead you. And, uh, I will always think back at this time in this space as such an incredible gift from God that I got a chance to be a part of. And so thank you. But as my time is coming to a close, I'm also so excited for what God has next. Like I know it's, it's gonna be incredible. I know it's, if, if God did it before, he'll continue to do it, he'll do it again. We love you. Uh, 
we're gonna be around to hug you and hold you and high five you and cry with you and laugh with you and be with you. And then uh, sometime in July, we're we're moving the tribe west. Lents are going west. Lents are going west. It's a crazy adventure that God calls you to. And even when you don't know what's next or a very clear plan, following God is always the best. It's always the best. So thank you. Thank you so much. We love you guys. Thank you, Canvas. So come on. Hey, thanks for tuning in. And Pastor Jeff and Allie, we wanna say thank you so much for sharing and being vulnerable. And we wanna encourage you, if you're listening in online and you just need an extra extra boost and maybe this message pushed you towards your relationship with Jesus, please don't hesitate to reach out, fill out a connect card online. We'd love to hear about your story as well. And with that said, we're gonna close today's message like we do, or today's service like we do every single week with our benediction. It's gonna be on your screen, read it along with me. It goes like this. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You guys have an awesome week. We'll see you back in person next week.